In the next hour, we're going to be joined by a surgeon. He's going to spend a few minutes with us talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and he does a lot of work, obviously, that perhaps he doesn't want to, but he saves lives by doing that. His name is Dr. Ronald Paul Workman. He'll be our last guest this month in the ongoing series we've had devoted to Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's coming up after 9 o'clock news. Steve Millington will join us in just about 20 minutes. He's uh, here from the Twin Falls County Republican Party, the chairman of the party here in the county, and he'll have some thoughts on, uh, well, a lot of races coming up locally. Remember, these are nonpartisan municipal elections. So the Republican establishment supposedly stays out of the way. We might touch on some of those and a few other things, handful of things going on and a potential challenger in a primary for U.S. Uh, Republican, uh, uh, well, Representative Republican Mike Simpson. Uh, that's on the way. But first, I wanted to share a couple of things with you that I came across in the last 24 hours. We've been telling you a lot on this program that we have a, a director of, uh, of, of national in, intelligence who's been speaking out against uh, the fact that we really can't screen a lot of the people who've been coming to this country, the Syrian refugees, uh, the, the Muslim refugees specifically, because most of them would tend to be Muslim refugees coming from that war-torn nation. And then we were telling you yesterday about a specific quote that came from the director of the FBI. Now, the first guy, James Clapper, made his comments several months ago. The director of the FBI, James Comey, made his comments recently at a hearing on Capitol Hill. And in fact, a we have some sound from that. I did a little research and came up with this from C-SPAN. Since we've talked about it a lot, I'd like to put some of the doubters aside uh, and, and let them realize this is something that actually transpired during a hearing. Now, Mr. Comey, the director of the FBI, was appointed by a Democrat to take over the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and he's working at the pleasure of a, of a Democrat in the White House. And he has a background, uh, a long background with the Democrat Party, in fact, a representative Republican by the name of Louis Gohmert was questioning him and said, you know, as far back as 2007, we had a consensus here in the House that you were a man because of your talents. Party was irrelevant. We were thinking about you perhaps someday as an attorney general. So there's a lot of people in Washington that respect this guy. He is a Democrat. You would expect, though, that he would also toe the party line to some degree. This is the actual exchange. Well, it lasted about six minutes. I've got just a couple minutes. It's a little long, but I wanted to share this with you because this is what we've been talking about on this program for months, despite the fact that the elitists in the Magic Valley uh, would like to just close their eyes and you know cover their ears when this topic comes up. This is the actual conversation where Mr. Comey warns we may have a problem with opening the floodgates and allowing all of these people into this country. Uh, take a listen for a couple of minutes. So it was very disturbing to pull this from the UM website in September that says of the 381,412 arrivals that came across the Mediterranean Sea this just this year up to September that 15% were children, 13% were women, and 72% were men. And then when you take that uh, along with uh, our... DNI James Clapper saying that, that um, this provides a prime opportunity for Islamic State groups to attack Western targets. He said, quote, it's a disaster of biblical proportions. And then you take statements that have been made by uh, ISIS leaders themselves that they have been able to place more than 4,000 warriors in with the refugees, this inordinate number of men. Has that spiked concern in the FBI, uh, along with what you've testified before about ISIS having people in every state? Yes, sir. It's a risk that we are uh, focused on and trying to do everything we can to mitigate. But without a good fingerprint database, without good identification, I mean, how can you be sure that anyone is who they say they are? You don't have fingerprints to go against if they've got documents that say they're one i've been there on the border when i've watched people exchange identification information and decide to use the other ones how do you, is there a good way to avoid that that the fbi is able to use the only thing we can query is information that we have and so if we have no information on someone they've never crossed our radar screen never been a ripple in the pond there will be no record of them there and so it will be challenging now Congressman Gohmert, if you heard him pointing out, 72% of the people who have been coming across the Mediterranean 
as Syrian refugees this year have been grown men, and most of them alone. In the past, the UN has said that most refugees are women and children. So this is quite a change. All of a sudden, we've gone from the majority being women and children to nearly three quarters of them being adult males. Now, that's not normal. If, if you understand why he's asking that question, and then you've got the director of the FBI say, hey, we don't know who they are. We have, we have simply no idea. We have no means to check them. In the past, when Iraqi refugees were coming here, they had a system in place and could easily identify who these people were. He has just said at that hearing, and this was a few weeks ago, but he has just stated it clear for, for all of those people who are listening today who have been saying, no, you know, you're making too much noise about this. These are going to be wonderful people. This is going to be a wonderful thing. I'm going to be able to buy baklava for Christmas, and uh, it'll be just wonderful to have them here baking it for me. And maybe they can come over and clean my toilets out and scrub my swimming pool and my floors. And gosh, it'll be so good for us. 813, Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This is starting to actually shake up the political system in other parts of the world. It hasn't happened here yet because, well, we were going to bring in 10,000, and then the number was 100,000, and now the president is saying maybe a quarter million. We may see that eventually happening here. This is from the Daily Caller. Poland's parliament has literally zero liberals now. And the writer says a crushing sweep for conservatives in Poland's Sunday election means that left-wing parties have been entirely eliminated from the country's parliament. For the first time since the end of World War II, the feat is all the more impressive because Poland uses a proportional representation system where instead of electing individual members, seats are doled out by how much of the vote each party received. To qualify, the United Left, a coalition of Poland, Social Democrats, Greens, and other left-wing elements, needed to get just 8% of the vote, and they couldn't even manage that. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because these people have been, the leftist parties in Poland and across Europe, have been they have been promoting this wave of migration. Victor Davis Hanson, the great historian from Stanford University's Hoover Institution, said today in a piece at National Review, we have not seen a movement of people like this since the, uh, the hordes that came crossing into Europe and destroyed the Roman Empire 1,500 years ago. And now we're seeing some sort of a repeat of that. 39 at 814, our telephone number, 736-0300. This is Top Story, and of course you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Our first caller of the day, you're on the air. You mean to tell me you're going to listen to Louis Gomer? If you check, that dude is the lunatic. How about James if Comey, the director of the, the FBI? If you're going to listen to him, you're dumber than a box of rock. How about the director of the FBI? Hello? How about the director of national intelligence? Hello? Hello? Are they lunatics too as well? They were appointed by President Barack Obama. Hello, caller. Anybody home? Lights on. Nobody there. Isn't that, isn't that just typical of the American left? Gobert's asking the question is all. The director of the FBI, appointed by President Obama, is answering the question. And he says, <laughs> we don't know who these people are. You're right. And oh, by the way, the national intelligence community thinks the same thing. Also appointed by, guess who? President Barack Obama. Hello, lefty. Why can't that get through your thick, thick skull? We've got another caller with us. It's 815-38. Bill Colley with you on Top Story, and you're up next on KLIX. Good morning, Bill. If we, if we don't learn from history, we're doomed to repeat it. But I would encourage everybody to get Glenn Beck's book, It's About Islam. You know, and it talks about the seven phases of basically world domination, not only by terrorist jihad, but by this immigration jihad, yeah. which is the main focus. And that book is just absolutely well-researched, documented, goes into the history and everything. But it's it's about Islam by Glenn Beck, and you can get it at uh, any of the books book outlets. But I can guarantee you, you read that book and still can believe all of this nonsense that we're hearing about how good these refugees are for our communities and for our country. And one lady from Egypt, she just laid it out. In 20 years, she said, this country will be taken over by, uh, you know, Muslim immigrants. Well, and we will have Islam, uh, Sharia law here. 
And, and, and thank you for the call. I, I want to point out, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in the next hour after the doctor's visit, uh, later in the uh, next hour, and I'm going to explain how this may be tied to several larger United Nations goals to basically break down borders across the world and institute some pretty nefarious ideas that they have there, and it will become a very Orwellian world in the future if this continues. Why do you think they want to disarm us? Why do you think that they're trying to destroy our culture? Why do you think bakers who refuse to bake cakes for same-sex marriages are being sent to jail? These things I'm going to try to tie together in the next hour. At The Telegraph, which is a big newspaper in England, a writer by the name of Philip Johnson says, it is hard to comprehend the stupefying naivety, uh, naivet rather, of those, including German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who thought it a good idea to send out an utterly self-serving signal a few weeks ago, inviting anyone who could make the journey to head for Europe. Of course, she was aiming it at Syrians, but people are coming now from all over the Islamic world. And he says there's an aerial photograph taken in uh, Slovakia this week, and you see just a line of these refugees walking through the farm, farm fields. For as far back as you can see, it's just a wave of humanity. He says this is going to unleash extremist politics in Europe. In Germany, the anti-immigrant Pegida movement is attracting thousands to its rallies. In France, the National Front continues to gain support. Elsewhere, Eurocentric parties are making inroads. In Portugal, you've got one that has just uh, taken election. And then he mentions what we were just talking about in Poland a few minutes ago, where in Poland, the right-wing party said, we are not going to have the rest of Europe dictate to us how many of these people we're going to take. And the writer says, in the early stages of this crisis, the rationale ascribed to Germany's policy was that the need, or they needed people because of a falling birth rate and dwindling population. He says, in Britain, by contrast, the population is exploding, and it's exploding mainly because of Muslim immigration. We have about one minute before we go to the break. So about 60 seconds, you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Go ahead. Hey, Bill. Uh, Sunday on 60 Minutes, they were interviewing a Buddhist monk from Burma who called the Dalai Lama a political power broker because he doesn't understand Islam is moving into that country to take over not only that, but the whole world. And this, this guy, this other, he was quite graphic. You could look it up, I'm sure. But even this guy understands what's happening. And these, these permanent fixtures in our society are the ones that keep trying to push this upon us. And, you know, I keep, thank you for the call. I keep hearing people say, well, you know, we've had other waves of immigrants come here and everything has been fine. You know what? There are several varieties of, uh, of, of flu, too, as well. Some will just give you a little bit of a queasy feeling. Some will kill you. The fact of the matter is, you have to be a little bit more discerning to say that to sit there and say everyone is equal that comes here and will all be equally assimilated. You know, you've been smoking a lot of crack, apparently, if you believe that. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. I've got more on this. It gets even better. Guess who your government's siding with with a couple of Muslim truck drivers who don't want to deliver beer. I've got some details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, quick turnaround. Actually, what we've done is I've moved a couple of things near to the end of the hour, so we can get right back to the business of uh, what's at hand. It's 821. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I, I, one thing that struck me, we've been having a lot of guests. We've got a couple more coming in before the end of the week, people who are running for Twin Falls City Council, and some of the candidates are saying, you know, this is, they're trying to get away from the controversy about it by saying, well, this really isn't a city issue. There's nothing we can do about it at the city level. Many, many years ago, I had a, a state legislator on a radio show with me, and we were taking calls from listeners, and the listeners started pressing this liberal Democrat about her views on uh, abortion. And she was a Roman Catholic, and she said, well, she gave the usual liberal Roman Catholic answer. Well, I'm personally opposed, but I can't tell other people what to do. And she said, it's not a state issue. So my response was, well, actually, every once in a while, and there's a case now coming before the U.S. Supreme Court, some of these future cases could overturn Roe v. Wade, and therefore, then abortion becomes a state issue. The caller wants to know where you stand on that. Think for a moment. If, if your local city government kicked up a storm about all of this and said no and made a lot of noise about it, and if you had a majority of them doing it, do you think perhaps that could actually bring some... The governor's already said that he's a little concerned about it. Of course, he has to do business up in Boise where you've already had one bad bomber who was convicted, who came over as part of these programs. So, you know, all of us talk about, well, we can't do anything about it. 
you can make a heck of a lot of noise about it, and maybe all of that noise will get somebody's attention, and then maybe perhaps somebody will say, all right, we need to listen to the constituency and also our other elected officials. 823, Bill Colley with you. on. We've got a number of these people who won't even come on the show because they don't want to be pressed on this. I, I'm making that as clear as I can right now. So if you didn't hear your favorite candidate on the air, now you know why. 39, Bill Colley with you this morning. So we've got a couple of guys who were hired by a trucking company. You may have heard about this story. It was discussed last night on the Kelly File on the Fox News Channel. Uh, Megan Kelly and Judge Andrew Napolitano. These guys were hired. Now, so let me set this up. They were hired and they knew that their jobs as truck drivers would require them to deliver alcohol. Then they objected to making the routes. Then they got fired. Now the federal government is taking their side in the argument. Now, liberals will tell you that Kim Davis should not have taken her job as the, the clerk in, what is it, Rowan County, Kentucky, because if she couldn't perform same-sex marriages, she knew she was going to have to do that. She should have walked away from the job. Well, if you're a Muslim and you can't handle beer, and you know that handling beer is part of the job, then why take the job? Take a listen to this for a couple of a moments. Judge Napolitano and, and Megan Kelly, and uh, see what you think about the arguments that are being made here. I think Judge Napolitano is a brilliant guy. It's unfortunate when the government interferes in a private dispute over religious views and takes sides and chooses one religion over another. The EEOC, the uh, Equal Employment uh, Opportunity Commission, mm -hmm. is appointed by the president goes around the country with the, with investigators and decides where do the workers need to be represented. Yep. Why do they pick a situation like this where they are outwardly, openly representing Muslims who knew before they took the job yep. that they would be delivering alcoholic beverages? Why this, take a job that is against is your religion? This is the same argument that the critics of Kim Davis made, the county clerk who wouldn't issue the marriage licenses to same-sex couples, well, to any couple, but it was about the same-sex couples, saying, why did she take the job? If you can't do the job, don't take the All job. Right, Very different position from the same people who are now defending correct, the Muslims. Correct, But in that situation, I think she should have passed that obligation to issue the same-sex marriage license is on to somebody else. She so should have been granted an clear. accommodation based on her religious beliefs, as the Muslims should have. But the the you either are sort of with them or you're against them on these religious accommodations. Well, that's what's wrong with this with them or against them. So why is it that the government chooses to uh, to persecute Christians in this country but give Muslims a free pass? Is there something bigger in all of this, as I was mentioning just before that first break? Is there a bigger picture we are not seeing? Is this part of a new globalization effort to eradicate our American values and our Judeo-Christian heritage? You know, some months ago, Steve Crowder, I think that's his name, he has a, a, a great video channel that I watch once in a while, and he went to all of these local bakeries that are run by Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan. The guy does a lot of work in the Detroit, Michigan area, Dearborn being a suburb. Dearborn also being controlled by a large Muslim population. It's been there since probably the late 1950s, and he was going in and he was asking to order a wedding cake, and then he was telling them it was for for the, a marriage between him and his, his boyfriend. Of course, it wasn't true, but for the video, he was trying to get a reaction. And each and every one of these Muslim bakers said, no, we are not going to do it. Now, nobody has gone in yet and filed any sort of charges against them. Nobody has gone in and taken them to court and said that they are violating people's civil rights. Can you imagine, though, apparently some real homosexuals could go in there and try to stir up trouble and file that complaint, None have. Why? Because they may not make it out alive. That's why they haven't done it. And then I have this from the Daily Signal. Baker who doesn't want to make wedding cakes for same-sex couples takes his case to Colorado Supreme Court. Uh, Leah Jensen, the reporter, another layer has unfolded for cake artist Jack Phillips. He's a Christian, by the way, and not a Muslim. He has asked the Colorado Supreme Court to rule that the government cannot force him to bake a cake in celebration of a same-sex wedding. Perhaps he should convert to Islam, and then he wouldn't have any worries. In August, the Colorado Court of Appeals ruled that Phillips and his bakery, Masterpiece Cake Shop, must bake cakes for same-sex weddings, even though this violates Phillips' Christian view on marriage. The lawsuit started in 2012 when same-sex couple Charlie Craig and David Mullins filed the complaint with a Colorado Civil Rights Commission after Phillips declined to bake a cake in celebration of their wedding. Phillips, fond to have discriminated against the two men, continues to battle to defend his First Amendment rights. And you know what's been happening? Judges have been saying, well, you know, your, your First Amendment liberty 
uh, is trumped by uh, Johnny and Jimmy over here and their sexual desires. If they have sexual desires, they don't need to get married to act upon them. Well, but the Supreme Court now says everybody has a right to get married. If you like horse and cows and pigs, well, if they make you happy, by gosh, Justice Kennedy says go right ahead and marry those horses, cows, and pigs. We have opened the door to the destruction of this entire culture. And each and every one of these pieces we have been talking about, whether it be Muslim immigration, whether it be same-sex marriage, whether it be the United Nations telling you you shouldn't be eating meat anymore and that you should give up and you should abstain from alcohol and that they're going to try to enforce this upon people and that we're going to open the borders and let Mexico move to the United States en masse, why do you think all of this is being done? It is part of a much, much obviously larger plan that has been set in motion by the Agenda 21 crowd and the folks in Geneva and in New York City working at the various United Nations missions. And it has to come to a stop. And you know what? Most of us stand there every day and say, well, gee, I wonder what time the football game is on Saturday or Friday night. Or gee, well, lookers, I wonder what I'm going to have for lunch. I realize these things are so big and you say, I can't do anything about it. But they will be coming for your guns. I'm going to talk about that in the next hour as well. There is an effort now underway and it has been identified online and in mainstream media to demonize gun users and also to shut down online any discussion about firearms, any discussion about firearm sales, any advertising for some firearms. We'll explain how all of this is working. And you start to realize if they take away your firearms, or they try, then they destroy your religious faith or persecute your, you for that religious faith. Then they open up your borders and say they don't exist any longer. And then they tell you you can't eat beef or you can't eat bacon or you can't eat hot dogs and you can't have a cold beer now and then. Well, I think it's pretty much all over. Um, all of those things that you do when you want to watch that football game are now going to be banned. We've got to take a short break. Steve Millington will be joining us in just a moment. He is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. It's 830. We're up to 40. You know, it's sad when you get to that time of year when you suddenly go, hey, it's 40. Isn't that great?